Welcome, 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 geeks and nerds, girls and boys, to a brand new edition of geek to me Radio. Today we're talking for the whole hour with voice actor Yuri Lowenthal, all about his amazing careers. We'll talk about Dota Dragon's Blood, Spider-Man, we'll get into it all, and we'll take your questions tonight. Stand by. We're talking to you. Driving around the greater St. Louis area right now, listening on 550 KTRS. Thank you for tuning in. If you're streaming us out there, we know we've got the video up. If you're watching us on Twitter or YouTube or Facebook, hello to all of you. And of course, you can always text your questions in at what's the message code? I totally forgot the text. 84126. There it is. I had to see it on the screen. 84126 to text in your questions if you have something to say to Yuri. We'll also open up the phones if you want to take calls. Uh, we've got 314 931. 5877 are the listener lines if you'd like to call in. Uh, without further ado, Mr. Yuri Lo- Lowenthal, how are you? I'm good. Can you hear me okay? I can. Do, you, do I sound okay to you? Yes, you sound amazing. Good. I love the whole cave you've got behind you, all the statues, and it's amazing. <laughs> oh, no. You trust me. If, if I could walk you around my office, you would see that uh, I've probably got a, almost enough cred to be on this show. <laughs> have you been uh, now that we've had uh, COVID, everything locked down? Have you found yourself collecting more stuff for your office, and uh, is it turning into like a museum? I mean, it was it was that way before COVID. I mean, I can blame <laughs> it on COVID if you want me to. Uh, that's actually a great idea. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I have collected a, a couple of things uh, since COVID. Uh, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say this uh, this giant Spider-Man statue behind me uh, was uh, is a sideshow collectible that uh, uh, I got and i didn't realize how big it was going to be and it is huge it is beautiful i spent too much money on it and uh like the uh nimrod uh, i am <laughs> i actually snapped a piece off the other day oh and, no uh, you know it you know I, I could talk about resale value and all that but that's not the kind of thing that i'd ever sell but i'm mad because i can't it's one of the thwip fingers like ah. now he's just now he's just like he's just like hang 10 you can't see it from here and i'm not going to show it to you because i'm still embarrassed now i'm sure um, there are people out there because i i broke i have a batman chess set and the pieces are all very oh, delicate and yeah. when i was moving it huntress toppled forward and snapped off her little crossbow arms and i had a guy that says bring that into me i can glue it on and fix it no problem so there's got to be somebody up there so if you're listening right now and would just like to tweet at yuri hey i can fix that for you need, here's how a youtube to, video with something with a 3d printer i need you to mill me <laughs> a part of a, th- a thwip finger perfect for me. a thwip Thank finger you. that's an actual term and you would know because yes. you've voiced spider-man across <laughs> what's been at least a dozen different projects Wow, has it has it been a dozen at this point? I mean, I, I, it's not that I don't trust your research; I trust it implicitly. I, I got to say, I, I'm very impressed because I was going through as I looked over your IMDb resume, which took me the better part of three days, and I was <laughs> I was thinking like we've had a lot of voice people on the show, and I had to go back and see. Um, you now hold the record at 740 IMDb wow. credits for your work. The second closest is Tara Strong, who is now at 599. In third place is Phil Lamar at 478. And I noticed as I was looking over, just in the year 2006, you did 49 separate voice projects. Wow. 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 That's crazy. Um, thank you for doing your research. Yeah, I, you I, mean... know, I, I now feel more, much more impressive than I actually am. <laughs> um, you know, I, funny, as, as a slight sidebar, I've been, I've been watching uh, Samurai Jack with my almost five-year-old um, which was an excuse to go back and and complete it. And I noticed in the credits of the most recent episode we watched, uh, Phil Lamar is listed as Pill Lamar. Um, so I don't know if that was uh, 
uh, intentional or not, or, or some sort of dig, it was probably it was probably. Well, I, I know uh, Samurai Jack is on his IMDb thing, so I didn't lose a credit for that. As my executive producer Joey yeah. just pointed out, he said I don't think I, that dinged him for that one. So good call, Joey. Right. <laughs> I, I will say that probably a handful of those credits are credits that people gave to me that aren't me, because the IMDb is you know is a free for all. It's the wild wild west. Anybody can oh. post there. So sometimes people post things that they wished I played or wished I would play. And IMDb is is very slow to correct things. I did so, not know that. So a handful, a handful of those, I'm sure, aren't even true. Huh. Well, yeah. and, and to talk about all the projects you've been, what I saw was you started in 1989 was your very first entry credit. So you've been. Well, I, I will tell you this. Um, they on on IMDb they uh, do it by the year that the project first came out. So because I've done a lot of anime oh. dubs, if that show originally came out in '89, but I dubbed it later. Um, then it would show up as 89. So I, I would say I started my career uh, in this field, particularly in probably 2002. So we so. know Spidey's origin story, Bitten by Radioactive Spider. Uh, yes. Your origin story then, since we're, we're going to that part of it, let's go ahead and jump in. Mm -hmm. What got you into voice work and animation? What did, what was the, uh, did you know this is where you'd end up? No, I, you know, it was, a, it was a surprise to me. I came out to Los Angeles, like many people do, to, to you know, be a movie star or, you know, to work in TV and film. And I hadn't even, voiceover wasn't even on my radar, uh, which is embarrassing because I grew up watching cartoons and anime sure. and playing video games. And I should have, I should have just come out here and, and tried that. But, but voice acting never seemed like a job that a regular person could get. Hmm. I, I, there wasn't like a map to, you know, I, I sort of had an idea of what to do to come out here and start auditioning for TV and film, but I didn't even know where to start for that. It didn't even occur to me as, as something that was possible. And it was my wife, actually, who thought up, um, you know, she said, well, what about voice acting? I'm like, well, I don't know anything about it. She said, well, let's take a class. And so we took a class. And uh, the teacher of that class got a job directing an anime dub and started auditioning his students. Oh, wow. And that was sort of my entree into that. I, I, I auditioned. I got a role on the thing that he was directing and was welcomed into a community of you know voice actors who did a lot of dubbing and they're like hey i like you let me introduce you to hey have you called in over at the and that's the thing i mean this this community is so giving and so generous and so open and and welcoming i, I wasn't used to that coming from you know a, a theater you know your tv and film background everybody's really kind of protective and cutthroat yeah. Uh, in that in that business, and I I I didn't trust the people who were who were talking to me at first here, and uh, but as it turns out, they're uh, they're just awesome, um, very cool. And so it's been great. Yeah, that's something we've we've heard from other people is the voice community is very it's not the backstabby, whispery behind your back kind of uh, yeah. circle. And I think it seems like with the advent of social media, that seems to have only kind of made it more so more open because with the world looking at you, you really can't be that right. way and get away with it nowadays. <laughs> right, right. What would hope anyway? I love it. You know, I, I kind of love that, uh, that sort of uh, oversight. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, for, for people. Uh, but yeah, no, it is, it is truly uh, fantastic. And I, and I, I love the community very much. So with all those credits we listed and all the, all the different projects, I mean, there's so many great franchises in which you are obviously Ben 10, um, if Castlevania wouldn't be the same without Alucard. We've got all these great franchises you're in, but I look too and very impressed the amount of DC Comics characters you played. You played Lagan in Young Justice, yes. Superman. Yes. You got to play Superman in Legion of Superheroes, Mister Miracle, yeah. uh, the Flash yep. in DC Super Friends, Red yep. Robin, regular Robin, uh, mm -hmm. Superboy in Lego DC Super Villains. You got to play a couple of villains like the Riddler and Harvey Dent. You got to play Icicle <laughs> Jr. That's got to be just to be part of the DC Comics lore to begin with, but to have played over a dozen parts, that's amazing. Yeah, your 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 logo, the font of your logo shows me exactly where your true alliance <laughs> is. Um, yeah, no, it is for, you know, for somebody who grew up, uh, you know, a nerd reading comic books, uh, it is it is truly still unfathomable that I am that that list that you just said and and you even left off a couple. No, oh, I did, um, yes. Yes, no, it's 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 okay. Your 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 uh your research has been uh, flawless. Thank you. Uh, uh, but yeah, for, for, for you to say those things out loud, I still can't even really make sense of the fact that that's, you know, that I'm lucky enough for that to be my job. Um, and, and I will say that 
every time I do get to play a character from one of those universes or any of the, you know, universes I grew up with, you know, whether it was, you know, DC, Marvel, Star Wars, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, whatever it is. Um, if it was a thing that I grew up loving, then it gets a special little check mark sure. you know, next to the yeah. thing for me. I, I dance like a little girl when, uh, <laughs> or a little boy who dances um, when, uh, whenever something like that comes across. Yeah, somebody, somebody noticed once that I had played, um, so I had played Jor-El um, in, in something once, and I played Kal-El. And I also played, if you, uh, you know, uh, you know, Superman X or uh, 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 what, what L, what, what did we give him? He's not Mon-El, but um, I don't know. I've played a lot of L's right. and, and as I collect <laughs> the L's, it, it makes, it makes me extremely happy. And that's and in the Marvel characters you've played too between the video games you've got Nightcrawler and Iceman you got two X Men right there uh, yep. you've obviously we talked about at the very beginning of the show all the different Spider Mans that you've appeared in especially that Miles Morales game not only is it fun but it's gorgeous just the the visuals yeah. on that one and then obviously some villains like Egghead we've got uh, right back here <laughs> we got your Winter Soldier for you right there in the poster I'm not sure if you can see nice. me or not but the video how do I how do I see let's see. Oh, there might be, uh, there might, if you, I think on the Facebook, it's, it's cool. I mean, I don't want to distract okay. you or throw yeah. you off. That's yeah. fine. But yeah. Um, yeah, for those people who are watching the stream, there's Winter Soldier on my Thunderbolts poster. I threw that up because I thought it'd nice. be kind of normal to have a Spider-Man thing up for you, but I, I'd throw a little something different in there. But when you're doing the voices, obviously as a fan, you come in with, this is how the Flash should sound. This is how Superman should sound. This is how, you know, Lagan should sound. Obviously the directors have a different notion. Is it something you guys find together in the audition process or is it something that uh they're like no this is what we want and so that is as the job what you give them regardless of what you thought kind of is it different for each project uh you know it's it's slightly different for each project but i would say that i you know give it whatever i think it needs in my audition and some you know more often than not they don't pick me uh, because auditioning is just you know it's just, just, that's just the process. Yeah. You know, it's, somebody's right for it and then everybody else is not, you know, right for it. Um, so most of the time an actor who auditions is not right for it. Um, and that, uh, that goes for me too. But if I then end up getting called back, uh, which, which is sort of like a, a, a further round of auditions where they sort of whittle it down to maybe like 10 people or five people, three people, whatever. Um, and then we work with uh, a director, maybe some producers, maybe even a writer to, to, so that we can combine what, what I thought it was with what they think it is. And then we work together to find something. And then sometimes I'm still not right. Uh, but then if I do then get to the final thing and book it, uh, then it's still a process of, of working together because I bring what I'm going to bring, uh, but they know what they need too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I like to surprise them. Uh, but they also, sometimes my surprises are, you know, not as welcome, you know, well, <laughs> Hey, that was funny, but this is more the direction we're going in or, Oh, Hey, we forgot to give you some background. And they tell me the background. Now that you have the background, does that change your, your view of that thing? Hmm. Uh, but it is definitely, whether it's a, you know, it's a video game or, or a cartoon or whatever it is. Uh, it is definitely a group group effort. For sure. And we had a couple of questions come in on the text line. I apologize. I should have said this in the beginning. If you're, if you're going to text a question in, just so I make sure I'm calling you out, start it with just your name. Like if if it's Corey from Saskatchewan texting in, just say Corey from Saskatchewan and then the question. So I, but there are two questions come in. One, I don't know the name of the first. I'm sorry. says, hi, Yuri. There's a lot of new young voice actors who really look up to you. How does it feel to be the standard of what it means to be the heroic male character? Wow old no. um, <laughs> um i you know i again even when people say that it it doesn't sound real to me hmm. um so so i'm 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 honored beyond anything but it also you know because i grew up with that too like i grew up looking to those people i didn't always know you know at the time uh, when i was watching stuff i didn't always know who the actors were um but those characters meant a lot to me. And, you know, there's so much of my, my learning and, and my, you know, who I became, came from, you know, th those characters that I was either, you know, watching or, you know, playing when I was playing D&D. So, right. so like, those are all, those are all so, so important to me. When somebody says something like that to me, it, it truly means the world because I, I remember a time when I was exactly that person. Um, and yet, it doesn't seem like they could be talking about me, you know, uh, it's weird. 
And he also said, uh, congratulations on Dota and keep killing it, Spidey. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Dota just dropped on uh, on, on Thursday, I yeah. guess it was. And uh, uh, it's, man, I, I, you know, I watched it for the first time pretty much with everyone else. I'd seen little bits and pieces um, as the animation was coming back. But, uh, man, it's extraordinary. It's great. It turned out great. I'm super happy. Yeah, we had the composer, uh, Dino Medigan, who did all the score for it. We had him on the show last Sunday. And we were chatting with him and talked about the composition and how he does all that. So it's it's kind of cool to hear it from the different perspectives, both the, the right. people who work on, on that production side, the people who do the voice mm -hmm. side. And you've had a great voice uh, group with you, D. Bradley Baker, Tony Todd, for crying out loud. Uh, he had Laura I'm Polvar, a huge, I'm a huge horror nerd. So, so I'm a huge horror nerd. So it would have been in the room with Tony where he would say the line because when, when Slivian – when we're when sort of our, you know, we come together, no, no big spoilers here, but, uh, but it's been out for, for four days, guys. Right, come come on, on, get on it. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, being in the room with him and he would say the line and then I would have to sort of approximate the timing. I was just, they'd be like, Yuri, go. Oh, sorry. I was entranced by Tony Todd and his <laughs> presence. Um, and Robert England as well. With... Robert England was on this one. Yes. Yes. And I, while I was not in the room with, with Robert, I had met him before in the, uh, in the voiceover, uh, lobby as it as it were and he's the kindest guy out there which is funny because that's not what he's known for <laughs> unless you saw him on v and v the final battle then he was much more tame that's, than he was as freddy krueger oh and i did over and over and i think i think i still own the full thing on, on vhs yeah but um yeah no that was growing up v was huge for me and you're right he was that he was that sweet alien that yeah sweet, sweet alien Shows the depth of the acting. Um, yeah. We're going to take our first commercial break. Uh, you're okay to stick with us for the hour, yes? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, we're going to take our first commercial break. We'll come right back and chat more with Yuri Lowenthal. Send us your questions. Text them in at 84126. Just put, hi, my name is, before you send the text, and we'll get it off there. We'll be right back after this. Please stand by. Hi, this is Greg Weissman, the creator of Gargoyles and co-creator of Young Justice, and you're listening to Geek to Me Radio. Stay well. Greg Wiseman, one of the many, many directors that I'm sure Yuri has worked with in his uh, career of 740 plus projects uh, <laughs> on Young Justice. We did get a question come in on one of our channels uh, from Solas67 from Australia. Thanks for listening. I know him. Oh, do you? <laughs> well, how about yes. Small World? I wouldn't want to paint it. Uh, he wants to know, what is your favorite lesser known character that you've done? Oh, man. You know, I was I was I would normally say Mr. Miracle, but you call Mr. Miracle out right away. Uh, Mr. Miracle, I believe, has still not gotten his due. I agree. Um, but yeah, as far as those those characters, um, and you mentioned Greg, uh, uh, you know, a moment ago. I love Greg, and I'm, I'm watching uh, I'm watching uh, Gargoyles right now with my oh. son. I use my I use my my four and a half year old son basically as an excuse to go back and watch <laughs> things that I never finished. That's perfect, or, or never got to. I see nothing wrong and with this. Gar Gargoyles is sensational. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, and so so far ahead of its time. Um, and... Xanatos's long game is ridiculous. Uh, but yes, but yeah, I th Mr. Miracle, um, I don't, you know, I don't know. That's, he'd be at the top of my list of sort of, yeah, you know, characters that, uh, that have not quite gotten their due, I believe. Now, since I know you're, you seem like you're a fan just as much as I am, do you have, with all of your uh, amazing things in their room there with you, a superpowers Kenner Mr. Miracle figure? I, let's see, is that, I don't think it's the, I don't think it's the Kenner one. Can you even see it in the background? You, you could just I can, see yeah, his. Kind of see the corner, if, yeah. You could see just the corner of him. I don't. I don't. I, maybe oh, it is the Kenner one. That might I'm be gonna, the 75th I'm, I'm anniversary, like not the 75th anniversary, but the uh, for the larger scale based on those though. I because I try to let's see, I lost my headphones here, but we'll be back. Um, yeah, I try to for the, the the ones that mean something to me. Um, I I will always try to get toys, even though oh, it's beautiful. They, they, they don't. Uh, let's see here. We'll bring it back here. Yeah. I think that's yeah, that's it, the it big came... DC Legends sculpt. I think. Oh yeah, I think that's yeah. You're right because the Kenner one would have been uh, much older, but yeah, because it came with uh, um, uh, Big Barda as well, and I think yeah, it was it was a while ago. She's probably still in the box. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm sure, obviously, certain ones mean more to you than others. Mm. But do you have like, are you one of those people who's like, oh, I got to get this now because I voiced him on this show, or I've got to get a, a something? Do you do you have like a almost like a Batman bat cave with your giant dinosaur and your penny. Do you have a, uh, do you have a Lori, Yuri Lowenthal cave with all, all of the you're, treasures? You're sitting, 
you're sitting in it right now. <laughs> that's that's um, perfect. And I, you know, if I, if we were pointed in the other direction, there's a, there's a shelf with uh, more stuff up there. And it's it's funny because it is a mix of. At first, I was like, I'm only gonna put up stuff in there that I've been on, and I'm like, no, um, I have too many cool things that I love <laughs> that uh, to to leave them in the in the box. So it's a mix of stuff that that you know the characters that I have played and just stuff that I love. Going back to there's a there's a the, the Max up there from Liquid Television's The Max, and obviously the comic. Um, there's Moon Knight. Moon Knight's my Moon Knight, Moon Knight is, is, you know, close to my heart and finally will be, you know, close to everybody's hearts with, uh, with the new show, but, uh, Moon Knight's up there. Um, I've, I've got all the, um, the custom made figures that we had for our action figure show that uh, my wife and I produced, uh, called Shelf Life. That is basically like Toy Story, um, but dirty, um, oh, and live nice. action. <laughs> and, uh, so, um, and it was, it was, it was my, my, uh, you know, way of, getting all my weird little, you know, nerdy jokes about uh, superheroes and sci-fi and stuff like that out into the world. It's, it was super fun, but those action figures are up there too. Big guy from um, uh, big guy and rusty, the boy robot. There's some Pacific rim stuff up there. It's, you know, not only my stuff and uh, a, a tough to find um, a Kuma from Afro Samurai. That, oh, wow. I had to order from Japan or I got Very while I was in Japan. So. And we've got uh, just a bunch more questions poured in while we were talking here. Uh, we've got. Right, I'll shut up uh, then. No, no, you're fine. This is great because they want to hear you. They don't want to hear me, but I'll, I'll be the conveyor for the questions. Uh, Fair Chris enough. Strahun wants to know is there a bucket list character or characters that you still haven't voiced that you'd like to take a shot at? Yeah, like, you know, the aforementioned Moon Knight. Um, because I always felt, you know, like I always felt like he was my, like nobody knew this guy. And I'm like, how do you not know this guy? He's like Marvel's Batman, only, you know, in some ways weirder and yeah. yeah. Demented. And uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and you'll know him soon. But uh, one of the, I was, I was in a room once and I can't say exactly because I don't know if it's aired yet um, for a cartoon. And in the episode, uh, Moon Knight was in the episode and I, I had to stand by and watch another actor who uh. I love dearly um uh play moon knight and it was it was hard because he had never read a comic book in his life and oh. I'm, I'm like come on he was asking me I'm, or he was I don't think he was asking me i think i was like every now and then he'd be like i don't understand and i would step in and try not to be too much of a <laughs> um but yeah no that's that 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 would be and you know our voices are like i I'll, I'll always audition for you know for every batman that comes up i'll audition and i know that deep down inside i know that i'll always play robin <laughs> <laughs> it's just the nature of my voice, you know. I don't, I don't have, you know, like a Batman voice. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, Batman, Batman, right up there with with Moon Knight, the Joker, mm. um, are you know coveted roles by by any actor, you know, sure. worth their, you know, nerdydom. Uh, but yeah, those are those are a couple. But uh, yeah, there's there's. I mean, thankfully there there are plenty out there, and we're seeing, you know, more and more shows dedicated to smaller characters that i never thought would reach yeah. the screen yeah know? which is so. great to see those things they're kind of these yeah. uh these i don't want to say b-listers but they're kind of getting their due now yeah. where disney plus alone is giving us like a she hulk series and stuff right. and i'm, I'm <laughs> I, blown I, away it, yeah I, I i remember reading the list of what's coming up on disney plus and i thought it was like somebody's joke list <laughs> right. like i was like that's impossible yeah, could, sure. oh my no this is a real this is a reputable news outlet yeah yeah, that's it's amazing to think all the stuff that we're getting is from Disney and DC's both. DC's really starting to put out yeah. their anime, and you've obviously you Doom know Patrol. you've been in so many. We got a we got a live uh, action Doom Patrol show. I, for I, God's sake! To say I would love to have Timothy Dalton and Brendan Fraser and all the that entire cast just on a couch and just sit there and ask them questions like rapid fire would be great. The brilliant I would love show. Just have to sit on that couch and watch you ask them <laughs> questions. <laughs> We've got, uh, speaking of other questions, we've got uh, Connor from Connecticut, which is fun to say. Um, he said that uh, you and I have a few cameo text messages about D&D before, but since yes. then he started attempting voice acting on his own. Wanted to ask you, has there ever been something specific uh, that you've done in a session that you found just has been something you kind of discovered, I guess, and has helped you in acting in any way? Um, I would say, uh, well, I'll say a couple of things. Hi, Connor, by the way. Um, I... I would say for in the audition process, I would say, while you shouldn't go overboard with it. I have found that improving little things here and there sets your audition apart from the same thing that they're getting. They're having to listen to, you know, which is exactly as it was written. Exactly this. Don't go overboard because sometimes the writers are probably listening to those and they're like, hey, wasn't my good stuff smart enough? Right. <laughs> um, but uh, just little things that that you know shake them out of their. Oh, wait a minute. What What did he just say? That's not. You know, we just listened to a hundred auditions that sounded, you know, the same text, and then 
There was just a, like a little, little things hmm. um, that, and uh, I have learned to uh, in the session, like um, to shut up more. <laughs> that may sound terrible, but I'm always so excited to be there that I have a, you know, I, I, especially in the beginning, I would have a tendency to always want to make jokes and always want to do this and always want to have conversations because more often than not, you know, the director is also a huge nerd and we get to talk about movies or whatever. And, and, and I go off, I have to remind myself to shut up a little bit more. We get more <laughs> done. And at the end of the day, they're like, Hey, we got a lot of done with him today. Um, maybe we'll, you know, ask him back because, because we can clearly get through it. Whereas in the past, I don't think I always do that. Ah, uh, okay. All right. So, so there Good advice. Two. Hopefully Connor, hopefully that helped. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. We've got, Eva or Neo Diva 2002 on Twitter uh, wants to know. It's, it's all my friends. Like I know these people. <laughs> you've got people. You've, we've got. Uh, they, they're called Deadheads for the Grateful Dead. We have to call them. Some. We've got to come up with a cool nickname for your fans. Okay, great. We'll think about. It. We'll think. We'll workshop it throughout the show. Uh, but great. she wants to know um, what is it like preparing and recording for my dear old pal uh, for Call of the Sea. Oh, Call of the Sea was a, uh, an amazing video game that I did, uh, worked on recently. It was it's like an indie game. Uh, it reminded me uh, when, they, when they pitched it to me, and they pitched it to me probably because uh, my other good, dear, dear friend, uh, Sissy Jones, had been cast in it. And she, uh, they, they came to me and they said, you know, they showed me some visuals. They told me what kind of game it was. I'm like, oh, my God, it's like Myst. Like when I you know, grew up playing Myst. Hmm. And they're like, yeah, but it's in this Lovecraftian world. And I said, stop right there. Whatever you need me to do, I'm in. <laughs> um, because Lovecraft is also a deep hole of, um, of uh, nerddom for me. Um, and so, uh, so we play these two sort of, you know, I, I play this uh, character who goes off to solve his, his, his wife's, to try to come up with a cure for his, this strange disease she has. And um, I come across this cult and we're down in the, the islands near Tahiti and, and I disappear and she comes after me. Um, but there's a, they, they pitched us, why, would you guys uh, want to sing uh, a song together we thought it'd be really sweet that in the end credits we have this recording of you guys singing together before anything went down um and uh singing terrifies me um i'm not a, a trained singer i'm not a good singer i can i can carry a tune sometimes in a very narrow range um so so i found uh here's another one for you connor uh the things that scare you uh and this might might apply to life i don't know um Although if it involves like tigers and sharks and stuff like that, you may want to avoid this right. bit of advice. Poisonous snakes. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, but things that scare you are usually the worthwhile choice. So yeah. it scared me, but, and my, my initial instinct was no, because I don't want to look bad, um, but I did it. And Sissy and I both uh, rehearsed and worked, worked with a vocal coach. And, and then we got to sing um, this beautiful song together that came out uh, great. And um and so th there you go. It just goes to show you that sometimes if you try those things that scare you, uh, they actually work out. And it never would have happened if I hadn't been pushed into it. I agree. And I, we're going to have uh, in April, I'm going to go ahead and say we're going to have Colin Mockery on the show talking about improv. And I think improv right. is something that any, uh, you don't have to be an actor to use improv because I think that's going to help you in everyday life. Just that ability to be able to say yes and and kind of move on. I think it makes you a, a better person, more fundamentally able to handle what life throws at you. And obviously as an actor, yeah, much it's definitely better. one good one in your tool belt. Do we lose you? There we go. I think you're back. Said connection interrupted. Yeah. No, I, no, I was just going to say it. Um, I, uh, my improv training uh, brought me much more confident both in situations as well as my job. Definitely. Yeah. And um, speaking of, I think we're going to take one. We got a couple more questions coming in. I'm going to get to your questions. Right now, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll come right back and we'll be chatting for more of this hour. We've got him on for the whole time with Yuri Lowenthal. Please stand by. <laughs> Hi, this is Andrea Romano. I happen to be the voice director for many animated series, including The Justice League. You are listening on geek to me Radio. Before we get too much further, I want to make sure I tell you about our official movie sponsor, Marcus Theaters. Marcus Theaters and Movie Tavern. You can go to the website, marcustheaters.com. They're making it safe to go back to the movies. It's one of the biggest things I missed 
during COVID is being able to go see a movie in a dark theater with a huge tub of popcorn that I shouldn't be eating, drinking the soda that's probably not good for me. But that's that's I love that environment. And Marcus Theater's movie tavern uh, are open. They're doing limited capacity. You must wear masks even when you're in your seats as if you're not eating or drinking. You can download the Marcus Theater's app so you can buy your tickets on the app, buy your concessions right there. They'll be waiting for you when you get there to see your movie so it's a more contactless experience. And right now, if you go to the website, MarcusTheaters.com, find the location closest to you, the Marcus Theaters or Movie Tavern location. You can rent a private cinema for you and 20 friends, 99 bucks. The list of movies you can do, it's amazing. I can tell by the look on Yuri's face that he's impressed by this. He's probably going to download the app as soon as we get off this uh, this interview. <laughs> Marcus Theaters, making it a great time to go see a movie once again. You can check out Raya and the Last Dragon is out. You can go see Kong versus Godzilla. And we just saw The Courier, which was brilliant with Benedict Cumberbatch. If you're like that uh, 1960s spy type stuff, always a good time to go see a movie. Go to the website, MarcusTheaters.com to find the location close to you. Get your tickets. And it's the best movie going experience in the galaxy. As we came back from that commercial break, we were talking, uh, we had Andrea Romano playing. I saw you got that big smile across your face. Uh, you must have worked with her, I'm sure. you can see me during the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love her so much. I owe her so much and I miss her so much. Um, we, we talk, you know, occasionally, but not, but not like we used to when we, would, uh, when we were working together. And it, oh. th- I know we've had, because it's actually Susan Eisenberg, who's one of my, oh, she's such an yes. amazing person. She's she actually connected us. Yeah. And so... Uh, I know a lot of the people from the Justice League cast, we've had Carl Lumley and we've had Michael Rosemont all say that they love that they can look across the booth and see the reactions as they're all in the booth together. A lot of stuff you do, I'm sure, for video games. I'm not sure if it was like this much for Dota Dragon's Blood. You're doing these by yourself. It's a lot harder, I guess, to uh, you don't have that reaction of the other person like you do in theater, in live acting. So talk a little bit, if you would, about uh, let's talk about Dota Dragon's Blood because it was such a beautiful project. Talk a little bit about your work creating that character and creating uh, the voice for him. Um, you know, I, I loved to, to go back to what you were just talking about. They did try as much as possible to bring the the full cast in uh, by full cast, not everybody. But if they there were a lot of scenes with certain people in them, they would try to bring us in together so we could uh, get the reactions off of people. And and I do always, uh, you know, like that best if we can do it. But then we recorded a significant amount of that show uh, in like COVID time. Yeah. So, so we were all recording remotely from, from home or from, you know, lockdown locations. Uh, so we, we didn't get to do that. Although uh, in a couple of instance, instances, we at least got sort of like a zoom thing going so that uh, some of us could, you know, not exactly be acting in the same room, but as close as we were going to get. Hmm. And yeah, I do believe, I, I believe any, any, you know, actor you, you know, you'll see working in this business can do a great performance without somebody across them, but you will always get a better one. And it will always, there will always be something a little extra special when that actor is reacting off of what's immediately being thrown at them. Uh, 100%. Uh, for, for Davion uh, in, in Dota Dragon's Blood, I, uh, the, the, the writer, you know, the head writer showrunner, Ashley Miller has, and I have been friends for a very long time. Mm. And it was really nice to, to be, but we don't always get to work together. As a matter of fact, we've we've only really worked together once before on Terminator: The Sarakana Chronicles. Oh wow! Uh, which was yeah, which was a, a whole other story and, and uh, loads of fun. Uh, but uh, for this one, we really got to spend a lot of time together creating that character. Um, and it was uh, you know it's it was a, a tr- you know just a, a terrific now um, because it 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 is descended from. A, a you know well-known video game property not not well known to me at the time but um but uh with 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 you know huge fan base we also were you know beholden to a certain extent to the you know the lore of the game right but Va- valve software who you know uh, whose you know property that is gave uh ashley and and all of us actors quite a significant amount of liberty to create that the world of the show um because while the the game is you know fully fleshed out it doesn't you know story wise it didn't have quite the deep lore it was a lot of different pieces and i think they were looking to the show to a certain extent to find ways to put all those pieces together and to give reasons for things and which is something i think uh, ash did uh, brilliantly and uh, was very fun to watch and we had another question come in this one uh, from our facebook it's uh alan sanders wanted to know if you're just walking around all the time 
and practicing voices in your head to try, oh, I can do this for this. Oh, maybe this would work. Do you, do you have that happen a lot where you're, you, you hear a voice from somebody or you're just thinking of a voice and that's kind of what, I wonder what, what I'll get to use that in. How does that work? Every now and then, it's, it's not a regular thing. I, I, I don't go around uh, bouncing those voices off, but every now and then I'll hear somebody's voice or you know somebody's voice in a movie, or I'll try a, an impression of somebody and it'll end up not sounding like them at all. It'll be a <laughs> terrible impression, but there'll be something about it that I'm like, oh, but maybe I could use that in the future and nobody will know that I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing an impression. Um, yeah, so that, that comes up every now and then. I know that some actors are really good at cataloging those things. When they come up, they'll even maybe record some stuff so they have that they can file that away and i'm unfortunately not that industrious hmm. uh, or you know or well put together uh but but yeah things things come up all the time little little things and uh, more often than not i will be like you know what i should use that thing and and then i forget it oh. <laughs> you know, like when the time <laughs> comes to access any of that data um, right. i just have to sort of trust that it's in there somewhere and maybe it'll come <laughs> out if it needs to so a lot of these times uh, when you're working on a certain project, does it help you? Are you a visual person? Like if you see the drawing of a character first, does that lend more or is that kind of like, oh, I didn't picture him to look like that. I'll have to adjust where I was doing the voice at. Do you, does it help to have the visual aspect of that at all? I love having the visual aspect when, when we can. Um, we don't always get that. Um, more often than not, even in the audition process, they'll have some art for the character, but not always. Um, and I like having that. It gives, I don't always have to, you know, I don't feel like that I'm a slave to that, mm -hmm. but any, any little thing that I can, you know, get from the world that they're trying to create will definitely inform, uh, my choices. And, and then, you know, after that, we, we all work together to, to really, you know, hone it. I always think it's interesting too, because like I said, all the projects you've worked on, I, well, let me ask that question. Is there anybody who you know of that you haven't had the chance to work with that you would really like to get the chance to work with, be it in the voice industry or an actor who sometimes does voice or in a live action thing. Right. Is there anything? I, you know, there are many um, because like I said, I'm a big, I'm a huge movie buff. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, I've been watching cartoons and play video games through the, you know, the better part of my life. Uh, so there, there is an endless list. Um, but I have always idolized uh, Chow Yun Fat. Uh, from oh wow! Yeah, Hong, from Hong Kong cinema, and and I will tell you, uh, and this is why I, you know, when I go to conventions now, um, I used to go to conventions, you know, as a as a fan back when I was a kid, and 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 I really feel like I understand the, you know, when I'm sitting across the table from somebody who stood in line to, you know, for for an autograph or a photo or whatever, I really know what they're feeling because I have been there many many times in the past, and uh, once after I was. I just started my acting career in New York and by career, I mean, I was, you know, I wanted to be an actor and I was doing a lot of theater and, you know, making, you know, student, you know, doing student films and independent films and, you know, so whatever I could do uh, in New York, there was a retrospective um, at film form or somewhere. And um, uh, it was a Chow Yun-Fat uh, retrospective and he was going to be there. And so and he was going to be signing autographs after a screening of one of the films. Hmm. And I remember uh, lining up and, waiting and waiting and waiting and they cut off the line right after oh. me. no after me oh after so, okay so i was the last guy and i walked up to him and i don't you know I don't, I don't i don't have these kind of balls now that was this is back when i was young i walked to him and i said i said uh you know uh, mr chow i you know i'm a huge fan of blah 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 uh your your hand must be tired from signing all these autographs uh, here is a picture of me and i handed him my headshot and uh, and I said, I really do hope to to work with you someday. And he did a very small thing that I'll always remember. He looked at the picture, and he got out of his chair and he stood up and he and he and he shook my hand and he said, I hope so too. Wow. And and you know what? Even if he didn't mean those words, even if it was just something he was saying, you know, to to move on, or because he, he could tell in my eyes that I needed to hear something kind. <laughs> um, throughout my career i always that was always a touchstone for me i'm like maybe if i do this enough maybe if i work harder maybe someday that will come true you know and i'll get to recall that conversation with him those those words gave mm. me strength even though they were they were minor and i'm sure he forgot them you know uh, you know 60 seconds later um they meant something to me 
And and what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> if, if there's if there's a certain actor right. that you want to work with, yes, yeah, right. right. Well, that you haven't uh, well, yet. Well, he would he would be one. I I rec- I mean, I love I love Keanu Reeves and and always have uh, throughout everything. And um, I while I have never met him, I did see him in a lobby uh, once uh, when I was in the studio recording for something else, and he was he was recording Cyberpunk. I have no I have no idea. Um, but he was just in the lobby and he was talking on the phone. And even though we didn't even share a word and he didn't even look over, like he was, you know, in his own world, which is, you know, totally fine. His, his own, you know, right. And as it should be, um, I felt like, like the rest of the day, I felt like I was riding like a flying unicorn or something like that. Like I felt <laughs> like an angel had, had touched me. Just the seeing of Keanu Reeves in the wild was so exciting to me and, and fun. Well, now that it, you've got, you said that I want to see Keanu Reeves and Yuri Lowenthal in a reboot of Touched by an Angel. Now that's there all that's go. in my mind for there some reason. There you go. <laughs> and you said you can't sing, so you might not be more for the Della Reese role than, <laughs> than maybe that's Keanu's forte of singing. Who knows? But that'd exactly. be an interesting. Uh... <laughs> that guy could do anything. Yeah. I'm sure if called upon. And with being the voice of Spider-Man in so many of these I projects, I don't want to keep coming back to Spider-Man. Uh, but you still have you? Please. Oh, are you still there? Yes. Okay. Okay. For, for, yeah. Okay. Good. Yes, yeah. Okay. I just saw something come to the say connection interrupted. So it's it's uh, probably okay. something atmospheric out there. Who knows? But right. uh, with with having voiced so many iterations of Spider-Man, I met Dan Gilvezan one time at the convention. I said I'm a huge fan. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my Spider-Man cartoon. I grew up watching when I was in my formative years, and I said I always hear that voice when I'm reading comic books. You've worked with all these different actors who've done Marvel comics roles. You've been in these roles with them. Who are for you the voices of your child that you really distinctly remember? This is the voice of Spider-Man. This is the voice of, uh, you know, Iceman. Who for you are those touchstone voices? Um, wow. Um, like I said, I didn't, I wasn't always aware of who the voices were. I was, I was always like growing up, I was always sort of, um, you know, taken, you know, in into the world of what it was. And it, it never even occurred to me that there was, somebody behind the you know behind the curtain um but i do remember that the first time i walked into a room i believe it was for a recording session of ben 10 mm-hmm. and clancy brown was there Ugh. i i start like I, I i started shaking just like a little bit because you know because he was the he was he was the kurrigan at the beginning and then you know and then everything else since then and you know he's had such a a, a wonderfully interesting buckaroo bonsai for god's sake like, I, you know, it was such a, he has such an amazing career and continues to to do so. And he's a very, a sort of, he's a, he's a tall guy and, you know, he's got that very um, intense voice. Right. And I just remember thinking all the questions I wanted to ask him, all the stuff I wanted to talk to him about, but being absolutely terrified uh, to open <laughs> my mouth uh, other than to say my lines. And I don't think, I don't think I ever did, you know, mm. until much later, um, you know, we haven't had many conversations, but uh but definitely that that first day, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and again, he's for me, he's now the voice of Lex Luthor and always will be ever since Justice League. That that is yeah. the Lex Luthor I want to see on screen as well. Uh, that that kind of yeah. down and dirty a business kind of guy, but really the monster behind. Him. He has yeah. that voice cadence perfectly. And funny that him and Rosenbaum get to you know get to work together on Justice League. Right, that was um, absolutely and- brilliant. And have and have one of my one of my favorite uh, exchanges when they when they've when they've done the body swap in an episode, <laughs> in the bathroom moment, and uh, he says, you know, they 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 look at it. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, Luther's about to leave the bathroom, and he, they're like, hey, aren't you gonna wash your hands? And he looks at him. He's like, oh my god, have I been caught? Do they do they know it's? And he says, no, because I'm evil. That's right. <laughs> um, but it was you know. It was the flash in the anyway. right. The great yeah. brain robbery. That's a that's a great episode. It's very well done. Thank you. And just all the stuff you've worked on. I can't imagine that there's much left as far as uh, like, obviously, you keep want to keep certain roles that you kind of feel a little bit protective of since you've sure. done them so much. Is is Spider-Man one of those roles? Are there certain is it Alucard? Uh, what are some of those roles that you kind of feel very like that's mine? No one else can do that voice. Well, I, you know, I, I have a, I have, I have two feelings and they're all, they're almost opposite, but it's the same. I think it's the same. Um, with Spider-Man, any, you know, it was, it was said in Spider-Verse, anyone can wear the mask. And I believe it's true. We've had so many brilliant Spider-Men over the years and we will continue to have more and more. But thankfully they've carved out, you know, Earth 1048 Spider-Man 
for that game, I do feel some ownership over that Spider-Man. Okay. <laughs> and it's nice because there are so many Spider-Mans, um, you know, running around. I can be excited to see new people play the role and to take up the mantle, but still have my own Spider-Man that's just for me. <laughs> that one. Yes, that right guy. there. I love that shirt. Yeah, uh, me too. I, you know. Um, so, so yeah. So, I, I mean, I do feel a certain ownership for that, that Spidey in particular, but I love seeing where they're taking it. And I love that there are so many Spider-Mans and, you know, I've always loved Josh Keaton and, you know, they're, they like, there'll be no, you know, greater Spider-Man for me, you know, being a Spider-Man appreciator. Um, but, you know, there's, there's, there's so many great spider I mean, Spider-Verse, you know, alone had several of the best Spider-Man ever yeah. all in the same movie, you know? Yeah. Um, that was also the year that, uh, that Nicholas Cage got to play both Spider-Man and Superman. That's right. Uh, which I'm sure, for which for him was probably, you know, he's a big nerd. Um, I'm sure that was a big deal for him uh, too. I have no doubt that would have been yeah. amazing. Um, yeah. We're going to take our very last commercial break. We're going to come back. Are you okay to stick with us for a little bit longer? Yes, sir. Perfect. We're going to take this last commercial break. We'll come right back and finish our chat with Yuri Lowenthal. Please stand by. Hey, guys, this is Kari Payton. I play Cyborg on Teen Titans Go. Booyah! And get ready for some geek to me radio. I hear it's real good. And we're back. Want to make sure we tell you about our premier sponsor, the City of St. Charles. You can go to the website discoverstcharles.com. That's discoverstcharles.com. Plan your trip now. We're hopefully seeing a light at the end of this COVID tunnel. People are want to get out and want to start doing stuff again. If you're wanting to explore some place you've not been before, may I recommend the City of St. Charles? Uh, they've got Food places you won't believe if you're a foodie. They've got all those historical buildings with the statues and the placards. And, you know, this person, this was the first official state capital of Missouri. If you're a history nerd, if you want to just get out and do some shopping, they've got all these little shops that you won't find anywhere else uh, with a lot of cool stuff. And we want to support these local small businesses. No one's had it harder during COVID than these places. So make sure if you're watching this and you're in the St. Louis area, go out and check out Main Street, St. Charles, the whole area. Plan your trip. If you're from out of town, want to go someplace new, discoverstcharles.com. Find uh, little bed and breakfasts, uh, hotels with world-class accommodations. You can do it all from the website, discoverstcharles.com. As we always say, it's an historically good time. We're finishing our conversation as we draw to the end of the hour. I can't believe it's already been an hour uh, talking with Yuri Lowenthal. This is, uh, this is crazy because I feel like we could probably have you on for another hour and still have stuff to talk about. Maybe we'll have to do a, a sequel at some point. We will. I'd love to have you back. Absolutely. Um, speaking of, in the meantime, I'm not talking about history, I'd love to for them to build a statue to Kari Payton. He is he is truly the best. Of us. I mean, if they if they don't, it's gonna be. It's right. probably one of those things. I know because I've met the guy several times. He's so humble, so nice. He'd probably be best. like Dolly Parton and be like, no, no. If you want to do one after I'm gone, that's fine. But I don't need one now because that's just the kind of guy Kari is as well. I feel. I would, I would, I would visit Kari Wood though if there was a Kari Wood theme park. <laughs> now this is another. You keep giving me all these things I I didn't know I needed until I've heard about it. Kari Wood, that's brilliant. I love it. Um, I, I take it you probably worked with Kari on one of your numerous projects as well because I saw your face light up when you heard his voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he like I said, he's the best of us, and he's 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 just fun. He's just fun. He's just fun. So warm and so smart and funny. Um, yes, we've worked together on a, on a number of occasions. And as we're drawing to the close here, uh, I know a lot of times you've got NDAs you can't talk about. Are there any projects? Mm -hmm. We're obviously very excited for Dota Dragon's Blood on Netflix mm -hmm. currently. If you haven't started watching mm -hmm. that, it's breathtaking. It's going to draw you right in. You'll binge the whole thing in two nights. But is there anything else that you've got coming out that people can look forward to uh, if you want to talk about it or promote or plug? You know, I, I, I'm always very careful uh, <laughs> about talking about things that, that haven't uh, come out yet because more often than not, they, they caution me not to. Okay. So I'm going to be careful. But I will say that uh, there was a show that I did a couple of years ago uh, called Orbital Redux, um, and it was on a platform. Uh, Legendary uh, uh, had, had had a platform. Sort of, it was going to be sort of their Twitch uh, streaming service thing. And uh, we did a, a live... Uh, a live action sci-fi show where each episode was performed all the way through in one take um, where all the, the music was performed live, all the visual effects, all the sound effects, everything was performed like a play, but looked like, you know, an episode of TV. Wow. And, and it was, it was truly one of the hardest and one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my career, but because of the platform, because the platform was so new and then went away soon after, not a lot of people got to see it. Um, and I just want to say, because we haven't made, we haven't made an announcement just yet, but 
watch this space for news about orbital redux. And by this space, I just mean the internet <laughs> um, because I don't know exactly uh, where it's, I mean, you can, you can, I'm sure I'll be, you know, trumpeting it to the, to the heavens on, on Twitter um, and Instagram. But um, for those of you who did not get to see it live, you will get to see it soon. Very cool. I'm talking to you, Ava. <laughs> <laughs> among other among signaling others. people out. I love it. That's yeah. great. Um, before we wrap it up here, I've just got about two and a half minutes left uh, with some of the celebrities that come on. We always play a game called Celebrity This or That, and I just realized okay. we haven't done it for a while. Very Let's simple game. I just give you two choices, and you tell me what's your favorite. There's no okay. right or wrong answers because the answers are yours. So we'll start out with uh, the Beatles or the Stones. The Beatles. How about uh, peanut butter, crunchy or smooth? Crunchy. Uh, let's see. How about, oh, uh, green lightsaber or blue lightsaber? Blue lightsaber. All right, I'm, I, some of these, I'm, I'm worried I'll get you in trouble if I ask you some of these. I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> Marvel or DC? Do it. Get dangerous. Marvel uh, or DC? How does it come down? Oh, uh, DC, because I'm on your show. Okay. My, yeah. And again, it's no a diff different answer all. depending on the day. <laughs> it is. That's, that's very much the case with me too. Um, Billy Joel or Elton John? Billy Joel. And a favorite decade, 80s or 90s? 80s. Perfect. I liked most of those answers. I just don't understand how people like crunchy peanut butter. Other than that, this has been a very pleasant <laughs> I'm a monster. I'm a monster, James. <laughs> and uh, let people know, too, if they want to keep up with you, because obviously you've got all these projects coming up. Where can people, mm -hmm. where's the best place? Uh, just, is there a website or is it mostly on social media? Where can people find you? Mostly social media. My my website is is horribly outdated, um, so don't even bother going there. Uh, but but I but I I'm definitely uh, pretty. I'm, I'm vocal on on Twitter and s slightly on Instagram. But but if you want to find out news, it's going to be Twitter. Yeah, uh, it's at Yuri Lowenthal. Easy to find. Perfect. This has been absolutely great talking to you. Like I said, there's been so many phenomenal projects you and congratulations on dota dragon's blood on uh, uh it, it's got to be an immense source of pride that you've been able to give voice to so many amazing characters and it's characters that you yourself have loved throughout your time enjoying the fandoms yes it's it's truly i am i wake up every day and still can't believe it it's very cool and if we didn't get to your question i do apologize uh but we'll be this will be up online if you want to take a look at it later and i think hopefully we we didn't offend you at all we'll have you back sometime soon <laughs> yeah you know i was about to say um uh, he hasn't asked me yet but i'm already inviting myself uh, to come back on to answer those questions next time perfect and maybe we'll see the other side of the trophy room uh if, if, uh, if that's <laughs> I'll, I'll, yes I'll, I'll take you on a tour <laughs> next time perfect that'd be great as well thanks again uh yuri lowenthal it's a pleasure to speak with you continued success to you and we'll talk to you again very soon thank you james thanks everybody for listening and that's going to do it for us. Make sure you check out our sponsors, the City of St. Charles, discoverstcharles.com, and marcustheaters.com. If you want to get out there and see movies, shop your local comic book store, support small business. Until next week, my friends. It's not in the way you watch I sound be. It's not in the way you watch The Flash. It's not in the way Good night.